meeting Sam Fall. I'm here at CNSE, College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering in Albany, New York. And uh, I'm going to be showing you about the wire bonding for this machine. This older machine, not as new as the new that one that do a lot of automated stuff. It's an older one. Um, so, basic operation, take a chip, run a dip, put it into the base here, like that, that's the little lever, locks it in. Want to make sure it's all the way down, that way you won't break the tip when you put this under. A little high, then you can break the tip very easily. Basically, if the needle touches anything here, while you're moving it, it's broken. Put it all the way down flat and then move it under and you'll be safe. Uh, actually on this particular machine, I, I should warn you, it is possible for the needle to get stuck in a down position. So technically it can happen, but so far I haven't broken one. Um, basic controls. Power switch is uh, so basic power setup reset. When you hit the the uh, reset, so let's say this is the lever. I don't know if you can quite see that, but see this is the lever. You push this down, and that actually moves the the arm there up and down, just like that. Let me try and get that into focus. See, that's when I move that lever, that's what's going on. So, when the first light, that means it's ready for first bond, when it moves to the second bond here, and the, let's say the first bond pulled away or broke or something like that and didn't work, then you hit the reset button down like that and that will reset to bond one on there. Um, some other controls, loop, have no idea what that does. Search, same thing, no idea. Force, not that useful. Time, much more useful. Uh, time if you've got a very soft material like a tin that's kind of powdery or delicate, you want more time on your bonds. Um, also it's a little finer of adjust, gentler of an adjustment so if bumping up power um, and by the way this machine uses ultrasonics to melt the uh, the wire to the pad so power I guess means more ultrasonics or whatever but anyways uh, if you don't want if you want a gentler adjustment than just bumping up the power then you do time but they're kind of the same thing uh, in a roundabout way. Um, also, one thing you should know, uh, it took me a while to figure this out, you got the dial, the numbers around the dial, but also this number up here, see that in the black square, you may not be able to see that, but that's a number. Same up here. As you go all the way, once all the way around, it will tick up to two. Go another round, tick up to three, and so forth. So there's that number in front of whatever you have here. So it's, uh, it's a hundreds place, I guess it would be, Any, uh, or thousands place. So yeah, uh, it, can, it can be set to the same, you know, 50, 50. This is one, this is two, so that's 250 instead, of, and this is 150. Um, also, basic operation. Uh, this lever right here, you can see that, that advances the wire. So when the tip, the wire is going through the tip, pushing down on that lever will move the clamp forward so that way the wire is pushed out. Uh, and that way you can, uh, let me set the camera down I think. Okay, so when you push that right there, down, uh, down, the wire, this is the tip and this is the wire, the wire feeds like that, that way 
uh, it goes under the step. Um, if you look at the structure of the tip, which is useful to use sometime if you can, so I'll just show you briefly so you understand what the tip actually looks like. It's kind of like this. So, kind of like that. And the wire comes here. The wire comes at about a 45 degree angle through this little section right there. That's what you're trying to hit. And then down under this uh, anvil structure here. And that's when you move down that crushes and bonds the tip there. So that is kind of a, a view of what the needle looks like you're trying to hit. And it's super, super small, but that's it. Makes sense because when you're trying to thread the needle, you have to hold the, the wire about 45.